Hey everyone, Couch Investor back to another earnings video for today. So let's talk about Intel. Pretty surprised at this report, I'm not gonna lie. And I think the market is presently surprised as well because at the time of making this video, the stock is up around 5 to 6% or so. Of course, there is still the earnings call, which I'll cover the major points in the Substack newsletter, which should go out later this week. It's free, link is down in the description. Now, they did beat, double beat, so that's quite nice. Although there's still a long, long way to go. Just because you beat estimates doesn't mean that everything is rosy. As you will see, revenue still declined when it comes to the client computing segment and when you look at the data center as well. I'll also touch on Mobileye later in this video. First, a couple of comments from the CEO and the CFO. So it says here, Pat says, our Q2 results exceeded the high end of our guidance as we continue to execute on our strategic priorities, including building momentum with our foundry business and delivering on our product and process roadmaps. We're also well positioned to capitalize on the significant growth across the AI continuum by championing an open ecosystem and silicon solutions that optimize performance, cost, and security to democratize AI from cloud to enterprise edge and client. As for the CFO, strong execution, including progress towards our $3 billion in cost saving in 2023, contributed to the upside in the quarter. By the way, outlook was also much better than what I expected. We remain focused on operational efficiencies and our smart capital strategy to support sustainable growth and financial discipline as we improve our margins and cash generation and drive shareholder value. Now, if you wanted to know what the estimates are for fiscal year 2024 and 2025, sales growth is expected to be 13.2% in fiscal year 2024 and just 8.6% in fiscal year 2025. When you look at EPS, 2024, a huge jump because fiscal year 2023 is a disaster. So fiscal year 2024, 320% jump there. Fiscal year 2025, 38% jump there. Of course, investors are keeping a close eye on the margins, which this quarter came in better than expected. So Q2 highlights revenue came in at $12.9 billion, still down 15% year over year, but $0.9 billion above the April outlook. Gross margin came in at 39.8%, that's down 5 percentage points year over year, but it's 2.3 percentage points above the April outlook. And then EPS came in positive, 13 cents, that's down 54% year over year though, but it is 17 cents above April outlook, which again, they thought would come in as a loss, a negative. Then if we look at the client computing group, revenue there is down 12% year over year, operating income is up 19%, operating margin of 15%, lower on overall TAM contraction and OEM inventory reductions, and then for operating income, higher on reduced spending and inventory reserves. Again, it's a positive because of a negative, so it's a bit weird. If we look at data center and AI group, again, this is something that we'll see probably with AMD and NVIDIA go up. With Intel, it is down 15%, so $4 billion for this quarter. Operating income is down 101%, so operating margin and loss here, negative 4%. They say revenue lower on CPU TAM, same thing as before, then operating income lower on higher unit costs driven by factory utilization and product mix. As for next, same story there, revenue down 38%, operating income down 164%. And so if we look at the other business segments, which is usually the segments that are a bit more positive for the overall report. So Mobileye revenue is basically flat. If you look at operating income, operating margin is now 28% and income 129 million. They say here operating income is down 32% year over year on increased investments in leadership products. Now I do wanna to touch on Mobileye just a little bit. So they reported earnings earlier today. So the business again performed well in Q2, operating margin improved as compared to the first quarter of 2023, despite relatively consistent revenue and were positioned well for the increased revenue growth in the second half of 2023, indicated by our guidance. Future business highlights of the quarter included tangible evidence of the depth of our relationships with Volkswagen Group and an expansion of meaningful engagements for our advanced portfolio to nine large OEMs. Volkswagen Group's engagement across our entire portfolio is quite encouraging as it underlines the scalability and flexibility of mobilized technology platform 
and is a template we are pursuing with other key customers. And this is basically their updated guidance. You can pause the screen and see the difference. So right now, I think we can figure this report out. I'm not done yet. We still have to go look at IFS and then the outlook later on the graph. But currently it's probably something like much better than expected, still not really on track to where we maybe wanted to see things, but hey, we'll take what we can get. The stock has been hit hard enough and we are seeing some minor improvements, especially when it comes to margins and profitability. So the market is like, okay, you know what? We'll give them that. Of course, do share your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, if you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe. If you have not, we really appreciate that. We're trying to reach 30,000 subscribers. We're covering a lot of companies throughout this earnings season. So hit that subscribe button. It's free, so why not? All right, so going back here. So Intel Foundry Services, revenue there actually increased 307 percent year over year so the momentum is continuing there operating loss is driven by increased spending to support strategic growth so that's a loss of 143 million operating margin negative 62 percent but better than before then if we look at outlook and this is where i was pleasantly surprised especially not by the revenue which is still down 13 percent year over year between 12.9 and 13.9 billion dollars not that but this number here I think in my opinion, this is the most important number going forward, especially. So gross margin, 43%, down 2.9 percentage points year over year, but also a big increase quarter over quarter. I was very, very surprised to see this and I'm, I'm pretty happy. Then with regards to EPS, 20 cents, down 46% year over year, but again, a solid improvement sequentially. And so if we look at the graph right now, after hours, we are now at a point where previously we were rejected back in June, which is around $36.5 or so. Remains to be seen what happens, of course, during the earnings call. Things can be set that could maybe increase the stock price, could also decrease the stock price. Now, on Thursday, the stock market as a whole was pretty red, so take all of that into consideration. But overall, right now, what's going to happen is we're going to be at a sort of resistance point. If you look at the RSI, it is still pretty neutral. MACD is still bullish. So let's see what happens on Friday. Now, overall, good quarter. I wouldn't say it was a great quarter. It is better than expected. And that's been the story actually since last quarter as well. Last year, we had disastrous quarters, disastrous reports. This year, it's this type of stories, right? Better than expected, so we're happy and so the stock reacts accordingly. But is it good? I wouldn't say it's good. Outlook is good, all things considered. But we still have a long, long way to go, especially if you look at the segments, right? Client computing segment, still down, not really moving much. And the data center one, that's, that's a big one that should be improving. Hopefully, we will see some improvements in the second half of the year, because I'm sure when we're going to look at NVIDIA and AMD, you will see some growth there. So overall, that's about it for this video. Of course, do share your thoughts down in the comments below. More information in the Substack link down in the description as well. If you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.